Hey guys, Charlie here, AKA Level Cap, and today we're gonna be doing part four of the Yavin vlog for Yavin four. If you haven't seen parts one, two, or three, I'd recommend checking them out to see how we got to this behind me. Especially part one talks about the inspirations of why we're doing this and the rationale behind it. But uh, without further ado, let's get into this mock and see what's changed since last time. All right, let's begin with an overview of Yavin. We've got this huge layout, many tables, lots of space, lots of areas to work. The overall basic design concept is that this whole area right in here to around here is all gonna be tarmac landing zone with rebels working on ships, lights going off, cargo, things happening. And then in the back, you can kind of see the starting of it right there and that's the, the ultimate height of it will be our giant Yavin temple. Part, part of it anyway, the, the actual one would just be massive and not fit in here. And there'll be a, an internal hangar with control areas and people talking and formulating plans and all kinds of cool stuff. So here we are on part four, which has uh, changed a lot since the last one. One of the biggest new additions is this Zeta class shuttle. You might have already seen the video talking about this one if you haven't, check it out. Now you can buy this mock in our web store, www.brickvault.toys. This one was designed by Pete, AKA Cave God, and I think it looks awesome. I was a little worried that it would blend in too much with the dark blue of the tarmac because it's a dark bluish ship, but uh, I think the, the cargo container on the bottom, the orange there, separates it a bit and I put some lights around the bottom to try and separate it a bit as well. Also, I'd like to thank BrickStuff.com as they have been sponsoring this mock by providing us with our LED lights. They make custom LEDs specifically for Lego kits and they actually made a specific kit for this Zeta class shuttle. Now, if you haven't seen the back of the shuttle, it's got its engines all lit up with LED lights. I think it looks really cool. We've got some other really neat detailing on the front with uh, an actual cargo ramp and a light for it under there, which I think looks, I think it just looks awesome. Like I'm, I'm a huge fan of the way the Zeta class shuttle looks and it actually was in the Rogue One movie sitting on the, the landing pad outside of Yavin before they take it on their mission. So. Um, I'm just loving that. We've also finished out a big portion of the tarmac here, going all the way along. The spaceship's placement is not final. This is just kind of placeholder and we're putting ships here. I do, however, want this area to be sort of an A-wing staging ground. I like the idea of that. Um, the A-wing placement here may not be final, but and even the types of A-wings we have here may not be final. Uh, technically, I think the A-wings from the Rebels show makes the most sense. So that one, that one, and that one are the more era appropriate ones, where the original trilogy A-wing, like that one and that one, might have not actually been on Yavin at any point. but. Uh, we'll probably include both types and, uh, and mix and match and stuff. There's going to be a lot more rebels and parts and gear and stuff out here to make it feel a bit more alive. We've added on a few more puddles uh, as there's been a lot of, there's like a lot of dew and water buildup on the tarmac. Uh, speaking of the rebel soldiers, we've, we've been collecting quite a few. We've got a huge collection of them over here. We got pilots, we got standard rebels, we've got a huge box of baggies and people that look like they could be technicians and working on stuff. Those guys will all be set up on the tarmac doing various things. We're gonna have a lot more of scenes like this with like torpedo uh, tubes, ion torpedoes and like um, container crates and these containers over here and workbenches and tool kits and rebels and people doing silly things. Uh, carrying, carrying containers and then we'll have like more fuel pods and then these generators here and like cables and things lit up and doing things. We're also going to have that cargo train that you see in the movie uh, in uh, multiple of the movies carrying cargo around the Yavin tarmac. Now the other big area that we've made progress with has been the jungle. So Yavin is this giant rebel base that exists basically in the middle of a jungle. These big stone temples come out of the jungle. And over here on the left side, we, 
we uh, built up the jungle area a little bit. So the idea is that the jungle is kind of overtaking this area of uh, the rebel base. And uh, last vlog, I had a small amount of this river built. I fully completed the path of the river going all the way back here. I think it looks cool. We've uh, completed sort of a little bit of under building there to create sort of a sense of depth in certain areas. And we're gonna do some, some changes and some fun stuff here that I'll get into in a future vlog. But um, I like the look of it so far. I've, I've built a small little stone path that's coming in from the tarmac and there'll be a stone bridge going over the river here and the path will continue on back through there. We also put a, uh, I think that's a dewback. I think that's what they're called, um, that you see in, uh, in episode four, I guess in the desert, there's a stormtrooper riding them. But I was thinking, you know what, why couldn't they be a jungle creature also? We don't know a lot about the native animal life of Yavin, so I'm kind of pulling from the Star Wars universe and we're gonna throw a bunch more fun animal life in here, kind of creeping in and encroaching in the jungle. This obviously has a lot more work to do. Um, we've got our two trees. We had three at one point, we broke one. <laughs> But uh, I gotta put Jack on building more trees as he designed the trees and we have the parts to build quite a few more trees right now. So we're gonna build those trees, get this jungle more populated, more fleshed out. We've got a lot of cool ideas of little Easter eggs and fun things to put in the jungle. And ultimately it's gonna be encroaching on the Yavin temple over here and sort of trees and vines and moss and stuff growing up the side of the temple. It's gonna look really, really cool. And I can't wait to build out more of this jungle and I'm really happy with how it's turning out too because I haven't done a huge amount of landscaping especially on a big scale before so I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out with the the embankment look and stuff but I'm actually quite happy with it. Now initially we were going to build this front section of tarmac all the way out to the very end. I was like let's just finish off this this little front section here so we can be done with it and start setting up dioramas. But because that side of the tarmac over there is going to have this cool jungle area and it's going to look really cool and unique, uh, it wasn't going to feel too balanced on this side. I was like, we need something a little bit more over here to set this part uh, area apart. And the jungle doesn't really encroach on the temple on this area over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to work on a fault line that's like cut into here, I think. So we're gonna try and build a, in a, a really cool fault line and like the rebels will have like put little scaffolding and boards and bridges over it. But I wanted to do something to make the tarmac more interesting and balance it out visually. Um, otherwise it would just be more more gray tarmac. Not that we can't make it interesting with the different rebels and the different scenes that we're going to set up and easter eggs and stuff, but just from a landscaping perspective I wanted it to be somewhat balanced. Now let's talk about the giant Yavin temple that is not here yet. It is however almost complete in terms of its initial design the designed enough to the point where we will be ordering parts for it so hopefully by the time you guys are watching this vlog we will have ordered parts we'll see and i'll be crying over my new bank account statement but uh, uh, this temple here is just the prototype of the base of one of the columns this brick stack here is measuring the actual height of how high this is going to go up and then plateau and come back here we're going to have three hangar areas and uh, I want to show you guys what we've built digitally. So I'm going to cut over to the computer. My voice is going to change a little bit because I'll be recording on the computer and we'll finish the vlog over there. So see you guys there. All right, here we are on the computer. This program is called Studio. Bricklink actually makes it. We've used a lot of different digital softwares uh, here at Brick Vault before. Studio is the latest one and in my opinion, one of the best ones out right now. It allows for quite a bit of flexibility in digital Lego design. And this is a slightly older model here, but this is kind of what I used to do our, our mock-ups from and our prototyping. Uh, you notice the height uh, in the on the actual Yavin mock that represents the height of this tower here when it's fully built out. And this is the front of the hangar wall. And this here is the opening to the hangar while you will, where you'll see X-wings underneath. 
Now the back side's kind of open and unstudded right now. I do have this um, semi-completed in another file. We are right about ready to order parts. In fact, by the time this video goes up, I think we will have actually ordered the parts for this massive build, which is really exciting. It's taking quite a few hours to, de to design it, but um, I'm quite happy with where we are. Now, what you're looking at here is very naked in a sense. It doesn't have any of the weathering effects detailed onto it yet. You'll notice some like sort of chips in the stone and whatnot, but beyond that, I haven't put in the coloration here. Let me open up a file where we show some of the weathering effects that will be implemented. All right, so here we are with our four columns that are going to be on Yavin, these four stair-like columns that go up. Each one's uh, made slightly differently. They're supposed to have slightly different weathering effects. Definitely some of it's copy and pasted over, but enough to make them look different at a glance. And uh, we use some dark gray, some light gray on top of the tan. And then also in between the stones here, we get some dark green and some dark bluish gray for sort of weathering and mossy effects. Now these are gonna get covered in a lot of plant life as well to show how overgrown the temple is. So there's a lot of open studs here that are gonna give us a bunch of freedom. Uh, to add plant life on as we see fit, basically. I, I decided not to go for that in the digital route because it can take a while to sort of rotate and get things into the exact orientation that I want. And I thought it would just be more fun to do all the moss and vegetation stuff in real life. So all the structural stuff is done digitally and then the plant stuff will be done in person. Uh, interior wise, it's very, very, very thin and hollow. Um, we did some durability testing. I think this will be strong enough to hopefully lift with assistance from this middle Technic structure here because uh, we, we want to be able to move it if we have to repair it or make modifications and stuff. So that's always a concern of designing uh, these structures. And this was a very, very difficult build because internally you'll notice it's pretty complicated. Uh, everything is half a stud over between layers because these bricks here are half a stud apart to give that sort of depth and spacing effect. I went for that and it created an insane amount of work, made this way more complicated than I initially thought it would be, but I think the visual effect that it's going to present when it's all done will be totally worth it. Uh, these are going to represent small light columns that are at the base of the towers. There's actually going to be a little flexi tube in here that I didn't model out yet. Let's uh, load up a more weathered look for the hangar. All right, now these are the front slightly sloped walls that will go over the main hangar bays. There's going to be three of them and they're all slightly different, kind of like the four columns are also slightly different from one another. Um, they have different kinds of cracks and slight weathering effects in there. I didn't really put a lot of dark green in there because I thought it would be cool to have mossy effects, but the specific parts that I use back here are really expensive in dark green. And so I just opted not to do it and we'll put a bunch of plant life and vegetation over there and hopefully that'll still give me the desired effect. Um, there's a lot of sort of chips into the stone that you'll see on the bottom and on the top, which is cool. Um, I'll have like a corner chipped off here and there just to try and give it a cool weathering effect. Um, a change that you'll notice from that base prototype I showed you is that the walls used to be straight up and down, but I actually had to build in a slight tapering effect on both sides of there because these walls are slightly sloped and to fit into the columns properly, they need to be tapered. And so provided that I did the math right on this, uh, here, let me turn off the grid. Um, they will line up perfectly. And <laughs> this is one of those things that once we build it in person, we'll find out if it works. The backside of these is also overly complicated because of course I had to offset things by half a stud and make it all super complicated and crazy. So that's what's going on back here is way too much complication of things for enhanced visual effect. So hopefully these walls will look pretty good over the hangar. Let's take a look at the hangar structure real quick. All right, now the hangar structure is what's gonna hold those sloped walls. They'll each fit on the front side here. The back side is something that is not yet finished. And as you can see, I'm starting to work and build some cracks into it here and hopefully 
get this beat up a bit more. Rather than doing an intricate stone lattice work in here, I decided that I was gonna build a bunch of longer cracks and discolor this stone a bit more and put a little bit of ivy on it. But since it's on the interior of the temple, there isn't as much vegetation. So it's like gonna be more old dead vines once we're done with it. But I decided to make things a little bit easier on myself for the back wall and save a little bit of money in terms of structural complexity there. Um, so hopefully this structure holds up. This is a big question mark right now as to whether or not the durability of this will not slope down and bow in the center. Um, and I think I've built it strong enough with um, big six by 12 plates and stuff uh, sideways in there. I'm hoping those won't bow and I'm hoping they'll be connected strong enough to hold the weight of this hanger and the, the, the massive distance across here. Um, I also haven't built in the weathering effects. We'll put in some sort of dark green and more mossy looking colors in here and I'll beat up the stone a little bit just to, to make it look a little bit more unique and weathered and whatnot. You can see I've also built in the angle slightly there for the, the columns that will intersect with these and uh, create that sort of 16-sided um, temple look that we're going for. So. Uh, the plan is to finish this today and get the parts ordered. Um, so <laughs> that's going to be crazy. I don't know how much it's going to cost. I think it's going to be extremely expensive. Not exactly looking forward to the price tag, but you know what? You got to do what you got to do, right? Um, so that kind of wraps it up for this Yavin vlog here. I hope you guys enjoyed this look into the digital side of things for a change. Uh, sometimes there isn't a lot of physical progress to show off but there's a lot of digital progress and that's really what's happened uh, since uh, the last vlog is a huge amount of work on the digital side of things. And uh, that'll save us time and money in the long run doing things digitally. Something I recommend for anyone pursuing much larger Lego projects where there's thousands and thousands and thousands of parts involved. It's a lot cheaper, easier, and uh, yeah, generally that uh, if you go the digital route instead of physical from the start. So. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, any of the mocks that you saw in this video that you're interested in are, are likely available on our web store, www.brickvault.toys, and the lighting kits are available at uh, brickstuff.com. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for next Yavin Vlog. See you next time. This is Charlie, a.k.a. Level Cap, signing off.